Kilpailussa mukana Ramirent. Kotikatsomon eväät tarjoaa kotipizza. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to some more Disc Golf Media coverage. We are here at the end of the Prodigy Disc Pro Tour. This is stop number five. We've got round two front nine MPO coverage for you. I'm Tony Farrow. And joining him, Connor Wood. Welcome back to another great European Premier Tour tournament here. We have a fantastic lead card for you, each scorching through round one and earning their spot here today. The temperatures are hovering around 10 degrees and there is rain all throughout the day. So not only will they be battling with each other and the course, but the elements as well. Exciting to see how they choose to handle that. Well, let's see it here. We have our leader, Temu Talikainen, 1003 out of Helsinki. Lots of potential from the youngin. Joining us once again is Yuna Heinanen, 1024 rated. Said it in round one. Say it again. Very complete game. Looks very strong. Doesn't make too many mistakes. And another young into the card, Rasmus Sakoripi, 1014. Not bad. Kid's got lots of game. And a great forehand as well. We have to round out our round two lead card, Lukas Rokanen, 997 from Turku. Good addition to this card. I'm excited to see how they each choose to navigate the course. We have a few different play styles. As we look at the scores through the first 18 holes, we see Temu holding first spot at 7 under with each of the competitors one stroke behind him, up until 5th place where the field is tied at 3 under. I'm not sure if we'll see scores that hot today. I think we're going to get a nice variety of lines with this card we have today. Kicking it off with this craziness is hole number 1, par 4, 241 meters uphill well sorry downhill tee shot kind of perched up on a little hill there just trying to keep it mid fairway as there is ob right and left lots of cabbage all over the place if you are nice enough to get that far off the tee just gonna have about the same to go for your second shot try to pass through those white trees and get yourself on that open green as we have Temu up first off the tee to get us started here with round two lead card. He does play a little bit with that right side, but fights through nicely and puts himself into a center fairway position. Yeah, you can't ask for too much more off the tee of this hole. This is, That was amazing. Perfectly straight drive. Did get a little break through those branches, but... Oh! Yuna, Yuna is not going to feel the same. <laughs> a huge kick. Off the right trees, it looks to be leftwards, though. In its bounce, he was sent well into OB, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. We have Rasmus now on the tee with a big turnover flight. And unfortunately, got the green flag, but I'm not sure how much he made it out of that tree line. You see the rain really pouring now. With the light wind, these are tough conditions. Oh, yeah, and as the round moves on, the grip is going to start to become a huge issue with all these players. I don't care how much cover you have from the rain. That's a lot of rain coming down right now. I will say, though, these players in Finland may be the most well-equipped to handle this sort of weather, I think. They are no stranger to this environment, as we see Yona with another potentially misrelease. Fading out left again. Yeah, he could be having grip issues already. You never know how much he warmed up in the morning. Could have wet hands. It's hard to say. We'll have to see what happens. Maybe it could be just jitters, too. Lucas see a here. nice. That's great. Low, fantastic shot. Low controlled. Good turnover. We see Temu now fought through the gap very nicely off his first with a long, slow turn as well. Doesn't quite get all the distance up there, but at 241 meter par 4, this is a really tough one to get close on your birdie putt through these wooded fairways. We'll see Rasmus now. After his pitch up from under the bush, he wants to put this close to secure his par. 
That's perfect. What a shot. Wow. That's still going to be edge of circle, but man, that was so clean. Fantastic hyzer flip straight down the middle. Good distance and angle control to just rock up nice and soft on the ground. And Lucas, Lucas now. That slipped out of his hand. Just a little wetness to deal with still, and that, yeah, came up quite a bit short. He'll be at circle two. Hoping to save the par, I believe. And Juna, I'm not quite sure how many throws, but no, again, oh, he this is catching. Is, this is it. Oh, he did get lucky. He's trees. safe. That's all right. He has been scrambling with every shot, though, since the tee. I think this will be a big number for him, unfortunately. But look at this controlled little hyzer forehand approach. Very smooth, very safe. Yeah. Just making easy work out of this hole. That just... Three textbook shots, and he will be just tapping in his par. And Yuna is the one chasing him closest, and he's going to be giving up a few. Lucas, with a big step putt, floats it out there, hangs it a little bit wide, right? He gave it a run. We see Rasmus now for his par save after a beautiful upshot. Hmm. Just a little late out of the hand. Catching some chains, but not enough to hang on. And a nice par from our leader. That will be taking strokes on this card. No doubt. And on the field, coming in again is the hardest hole statistically. Hole one here. It really does test your mindset and your execution right off the bat. Starting your round, we have... Rasmus now for his bogey save. Lucas as well taking a five. Tamu with a four. And Yona. I believe this will be a, for a six? Double? I think so. He went OB. I think we may have missed a pitch out. Oh. A triple did, yeah. bogey. A seven off the start on a par four. You really see why this hole averages the hardest. We'll see how he controls that and moves on with the round. Now. Yeah, Big putt here could turn it all around as we move into hole two, par 324 meters, super huge backhand righty hyzer, curving almost in a U shape. And if you happen to get so much pan to the left, you're gonna have to try and get up these two tiers to get onto the green. I have never seen a shot get onto the green here. I would love to see one now. See, oh, Tamu up doesn't first. like it. But they never do. And then look, oh, it swings in. You can't over hyzer this one. I think his distance there is great. He will have those trees to contend with between him and the green, but they, I mean, nobody ever seems to like their line off the tee on this hole. And then it's, it's up there. Now he is going to be a little bit long, right? And he will have few trees to deal with he almost went deep ob i didn't even mention that because most of the time people don't deal with that but yeah he uh he really put some heat on that one rasmus got just a little kickback from those final guardians we see lucas with a similar high hyzer line oh lucas that is looking good just putting it to the base maybe a little bit short of the base but that's what you need here. That's a great look for a birdie on this hole. Let's see how Yuna responds to his triple bogey on hole one. Let's we'll see if he bad. can recover and play strong. Big swinging Heiser what? gets all the way up there. He Holy has an open putt. cow. That's the greatest drive I've ever seen on this hole. That's so far. Maybe that's what you got to do. You got to shoot it deep of the basket and then come in the back side of the tiers. That's amazing. With so, everyone now attempting their putts. Oh, Tamo nice with a nice run. Anheuser putt and, and Rasmus with the Heiser putt. Lucas mm -hmm. also is right up there. Take a look at this lie. 
I mean, this is what you what you get quite a bit, but this is this is not a short putt. I mean, he's 12, 13 meters plus uphill. Oh, oh the man, elusive birdie. I was waiting for it. Gets away from our card here. They look to be having short putts for their par. Hole two, definitely a tricky one. I think far less bogeys than hole one, but not too many more birdies. Yeah, the, I agree. The The stroke swing is not going to be huge on this hole, but birdie is, wow, that's tough to come by here. And we had three cage hits. That, that would have been great. I wonder how you play this hole if you're left-handed. Hmm. <laughs> roller and just hit the, the hit, <laughs> yeah right the hit the, just hit the first tier and make a big putt i don't know maybe we'll find out tell us about oh, this hole one's three. For, this one's for sure for a lefty we got a par three 94 meters the widest open fairway on this entire course it's gonna feel like a cakewalk to you after the first two holes <laughs> just have to swoop it in a little bit left to right Come on in here. You even got that nice berm in the back just to stop any disc if you can crash it in there, maybe even for an ace run. And at this lead card caliber, I really do think this one is a must get. As you mentioned, very forgiving. You can really give it a run. And with a wide open fairway and a shorter distance, it is one that you want to get. Temu, I believe, putting himself a little bit long. That will be a tricky putt for our leader. Yeah, he definitely did not like that as soon as he released it. You can see it. But that shows you he is really in tune with his game. Ooh, that's not bad. Rasmus coming in a little bit shorter outside the circle, but it's a clean look. I think both of them would like to fade right a little bit sooner. We see Lucas using height to get his disc more rightwards, but... We'll see if he has the distance. He absolutely oh, does. Yeah. Nice little The ones that get close. Kicky. No doubt. The ones that end up getting close look a little bit sawed off on the early hyzer. That looked good. Maybe, yeah, okay, a little deep. That looked like the right line, at least out of the hand. Lucas has looked a little sawed off, but hey, you got lucky with the trees. Everybody's putting, though. See who can find that birdie. Rasmus, unfortunately, out to the right. Yeah, a considerable putt, putt, though. Quite a long one. We see another here. It's Tamu. Cashes the birdie. Fantastic putt. There it is. That'll get you going. Not bad, boy. Taking par on one and two. He is now one under for this round two so far. Great start for him. We got Yuna here now for his birdie. Needs it, and he will take it. Getting one back. Staying in the fight, but man, there's a huge gap right now. Oh, Rasmus. Just having some troubles on the putting green early in the round. Gonna need to clean that up. This course does not allow three putting. And sitting at plus two through these first three holes. So much better. Thank you. Hole four, par three, 118 meters. I'm gonna have to just pop a big backhand righty Anheuser up in the air at the tree line on the left side or sidearm directly at that as well either way start fading into the right catching that late late gap bring it in on into this green this is not going to be an easy shot to get parked on this hole you have Temu up first riding the momentum of his birdie Looks like he's turned it a little bit too much, but 
We'll see how much that was able to fight through. Kind of seemed like it fought almost all the way through that first set of nasty forest. He still has one more before he can get to the basket. Lucas now oh, again utilizing tight. the height, but very turned over. Ooh, Good fade out great though. Great little redirection. All right. Let's see, Yona. He did this great yesterday. Little wide, but a beautiful tree direction for him as well. Put him just outside circle two. I'm sure that will just be a layup. Rasmus, Rasmus. too straight. Although it held the drift a long time, he gets to that mouth, although just barely will likely have a straddle out to the right side, a little forehand up to the basket. Yeah, likely just a layup, maybe a half go, but yeah, it's a bit far outside to be to be running something in the woods. And Yuna putting from 50 meters there. We have, I believe, Rasmus in the woods. Rasmus or Timo? Not sure. No, it's the, uh, I was yeah, Tamu. Must have been yeah, Tamu. Yeah. Tamu. Rasmus here. This looks like circle two's edge. Maybe just outside. Stand still spin by. Oh, look at the speed on <laughs> he that. He almost got it, too. Uh, yeah, it doesn't look so far from this angle, but that was, that was for a good sure far away. 20 meters, I think. I think yeah. that was definitely edge of circle too if not more lucas now looking about 15 16 any putt oh, oh so clean great command of the angle there just a little bit too high and tamo with a fantastic par save putt after a slightly long approach a good scramble from the woods from tamo yuna also securing his par it's a fantastic putt from Lucas, though. That was also not very close. Downhill and, oh, had the line. Beautiful. Can't be upset we, missing missing high on such a far putt. There's no doubt. Walking away with a par frame, no damage done. Tough hole. We go to hole five. All right, we got hole five, par four, 262 meters. This is huge. Small gap to hit off the tee, but as you can see, it opens up very wide. Just get as much D as you can and try to pull it left, opening up that gap. If you keep it right, you're going to have this weird, crazy Anheuser coming into this basket. Gotta beat some trees to get in here. Two big drives are needed to be on the green for the birdie. There's no doubt we have Temu up first with a Heiser release, flipping it up to flat. That looks to be riding very nicely and also fading left and opening up that angle, as you mentioned, Tony. Great yeah, spot. That looks absolutely perfect right in the... Uh, maybe not left enough. That looked a little bit better from the first angle of the camera. But he might have a bit of a pinch off to deal with that blind Anheuser shot like we were talking about. Ooh, but this is too low and too straight. That is definitely not left enough to have a straightest shot. He will need to bend around that corner. We'll see Yuna now try to adjust off that line, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Much this more hyzer angle out of the hand. Got the height, got the hyzer angle. It's way left, skipping. Yeah, you can see how much further left he is. That's going to put him in a great position for the second shot. And Rasmus now going a little bit higher, but with a ton of hyzer angle. You see that fighting the whole way. Holy Swings yeah. it up nicely. Is he pinched off with that second tree, though? There are two trees over there. He may be right in between them. Lucas with the flippy, flippy disc turning it over, but that's not enough. That's going into no man's land. Hopefully he's got something to deal with out there. Maybe it didn't get as far in as I think, but... He did bite off a ton of distance. 
We're not sure about his window out, obviously, but he's certainly up there. We see Yuna also with the huge turnover line. Does not look like it's going to flatten out towards the end of the flight, and he'll be a little bit short right side. I think playing for par after that shot. And if you guys didn't see round one, I would suggest you check that out and check this hole out on round one. Won't even I say agree. anything beyond that. As we see another slightly errant approach. I mean, a very tough and demanding shape you need to make here. Just bleeding out left again. Nobody has delivered their second shot right to the green. Just yet, we see Rasmus now with a big forehand flex. Yeah, everybody's hanging it out just too wide left. I mean, I think that's the miss to make because if you're too tight inside, like... This is what you Yeah, have. as Yuna is right here. <laughs> oh! oh! <laughs> Eat our words. Jeez, Yuna just coming in with a spike. Heiser almost slamming it in the basket. As we continue with the scramble montage, we see Lucas out from the Evergreens with a nice swooping hyzer. We'll see what Rasmus can manufacture from behind these trees. Oh. Came up a little bit short. That is a tester putt for par, no doubt. Absolutely. Let's see what Tamu has here. This looks to be for birdie if he's got a look. Okay, just laying it up, nice and smart. And right next to Rasmus, he had the benefit there of having Rasmus go first and perhaps seeing how it went. Oh, Fantastic solid. par save from outside the circle. No doubt about it from the get-go. That was in. Lucas now. For par oh, as well, a great save. Beautiful par save. And a strong scramble game by all of these men. Yuna tombstoning on that one from uh, way short right. That was really an impressive drop down from Yuna there. Inside the woods, we see Temu also tap it in. We have another par frame. Well, let's kick it into hole six. Par four, 222 meters. Just got to get yourself past that wall of trees on the right. Setting yourself up for shot number two, which is the one trying to get into jail here. We saw before, you need to just be able to putt through some trees because there's a bunch of them here. I still can't I, believe they didn't cut any down. <laughs> I did appreciate the strategy of just hanging out at, at pin high but left in the fairway and trying to putt laterally rather than getting in there early and fighting through the woods we'll see how these players choose to approach it Tamo off his first perhaps Ooh. a little bit low i think he would like a bit more glide than that to get the distance to push his second i would we'll agree. see how far that looks to be well short of the dog leg not sure what he's going to have from there but this is the the aggressive play let's say if you want to bite off some distance you're going to go sidearm flex shot oh and this looks really nice that is crushed from lucas look at that get all the way down there right up to our cameraman and he's going to have perfect footing on a nice hard spot of the ground open to the basket that is not open but Needless to say, great drive. Great display of the forehand line. We see Yona, I believe, trying to replicate his throw from round one. Unfortunately, Heises out a little bit too much, and he will be obstructed on his second. No surprise to see Resmus looking to shape the forehand here. I mean, what do you oh. say the distance is on this forehand shot? One to ten? To bend? I was going to say one ten as well, yeah. Yeah. I would 100 agree. probably to beat the corner and 110 to get past it like those guys are trying to do, like yeah, Lucas did. I think maybe 120 is OB, but 110, 115, probably what you're looking at distance-wise, and then they're hooking right, and that's just awesome. Good uh, good little approach from Temu, not really biting too much off, but right in the middle of the fairway. Shouldn't have too much more to deal with 
to try and get a look at this green. Look at this forehand flex from Yuna off the knee. Great display of balance and core strength there to still get some good rip on that. Oh yeah, to the side. You got to just to see it if you're uh, if you're on the knee trying to side arm one ten plus. Yeah, just just put it in a good spot and get your approach and move on. This just is call home deep. first. Tell them to prepare ice for the elbow and then go for it. That is Whoa. crushed. That's way long of the basket. I don't think we've seen anyone be anywhere close to that. Was I mean, that Rasmus off his second? That was Rasmus standstill sidearm. The man absolutely has some distance both ways. We see Lucas now looking for the forehand, forehand line to try and secure the very tricky birdie. Oh, he didn't like it, though. He maybe got a little slip off the shot, yeah. And that just think... didn't have enough juice on it. Didn't quite get it up to flat. He will have a long, heavily obstructed look. Yeah, you really got to slow the footing down if you're trying to keep control. That's that's one tip I try to always say. Slowing the footing down will help quite a bit. As we saw Temu swing his third shot in. Oh, Yuna, Yuna getting cute, layout. trying to shape a little, a little Anheuser there. Well, that looks plenty. like a bid to me. I mean, come on, yeah, it's a little inside. Ooh, oh. that was a bid. Lucas with another one on the band from well into circle two. He looks to be really dialed in on his accuracy there, just the height, playing some tricks on him. Rasmus to try and secure his par that Ooh. went a little bit long for comfort i was gonna say anything outside four meters here is not comfortable <laughs> there are way too many trees in the way i mean even this i think he's got a straight line still yeah oh high chains spit it back out and I think he had to throw at least some degree of hyzer ankle there I, on his I would butt. agree. I think it wasn't as straight as I uh, as, initially As it looked thought. for our angle. Yeah. But, man, that's unfortunate. I think he hit the pole. Looks like center chains to me. It, if it anything, was, a little bit high. It was high, but it was definitely center chains. <laughs> Open hole again. Hole number seven, par three, 97 meters. As I said, nice and wide open on this course. Just have this gigantic mound to deal with, with the basket perched on top. Slopes down about 10, 12 meters every side. Good luck. Try and hit it right in the front. Get that reverse skip. Park job it. This is too low he'll be putting but significantly uphill well above head height i mean I, yeah okay maybe not 12 meters but 8 10 meters we'll say that thing is a huge hill and i think we're going to see some lower speed discs here to try and land nice and soft potentially why those first two throws came up a little bit short we'll see how yuna chooses to approach tricky hole seven looking for that soft landing he does give it some height and some turn this looks beautiful that's it sit sit that's how you do it and there's that soft landing great angle control flips it up to flat and has it come down softly good use of height as well yeah that's Rasmus not trying where to match. i would suggest to to land it initially but yeah see that's what the problem is if you land it on the flats you can still get that skip he didn't go too far down, which is cool, but, I mean, still got that 7-meter just straight-up hill putt. Not going to be the easiest. And you could easily, very quickly, be further than 7 if you were to fire off the top of the hill. I mean, look at this. 
Just look at what he is dealing with. It's just straight up. Oh, what a oh there you go. Gets us started and puts his round to one under. The first time he is under par here in round two. Great putt by Lucas. Let's see if Tamu can match. Just a little low, but that looks like it sat down nicely. It just bounced straight off the cage. Oh, wow, last link. And she really in pulled there. him back in. But that's a nice little comeback from the the slip up on the other on the basket previous from there. No doubt in his first birdie here in round two. I'm sure he'll be relieved to catch that. Yona with a bit of a sweaty putt, but also puts it in. And that will ride his ship from hole one. Oh no, he's still got one to one go. One more. One more and he will be back to normal. But no bogey since then. It looks like he is in a good space mentally, and I'm excited to see how he closes out here on hole eight. Well, this is one he could get. Hole eight, par four, 225 meters. First tee shot's gonna be a big backhand righty hyzer, trying to push it as left as possible, setting up for this fairway. As we come on in, we can see that nice big old pond next to the green. A huge wall to deal with. Gotta make sure it has some height, spikes in, doesn't skip too far, because there is that OB line wrapped behind the back. That second shot really is the money maker here on hole eight. We see Lucas up first on the tee. That big swinging hyzer, I think these guys are all getting about 100 to 110, but he does not swing it back no. left enough. Seems to have caught the top and gets pulled in. He will take that OB penalty stroke. That is very unfortunate. I wonder where he's gonna go back to. That's what you're looking for. He even gets a big flare skip left. He should be in very nice position for the second shot if he wants to push it. Absolutely a great adjustment to the release angle. We see Rasmus now trying to copy that line. Gives it tons of height. And that should swing in nicely as well. These are big hyzers. Oh yeah, no, these are uh, no joke 110 plus hyzers in the rain, slippery surface everywhere. Yes, it's raining and sunny at the same time. That is Finland. Temu also with a big swinging hyzer. Does not bring it quite as far left, but gets the distance and puts himself safely up there. I think he will need more of an angle on his second shot. We'll see where Lucas is from and how much distance he chooses to come off the OB line where he crossed to open oh. up his angle. He does not take in too much. Looks to be trying to cut that corner. Yeah, very pinched off from there, but that is that is the best play. You're not going to get much more even if you pull it back, but not a bad second shot. Look where Yuna is off the tee. What is this? Wow. Parked. That was so big of a hyzer. <laughs> That's 110 spike hyzer, 110 spike hyzer in the circle. But that second spike hyzer was so 20 wide. meters in the air? I mean, it was up there. Ooh, this looked Tamu. like a slower no. speed disc, oh. and he did get pulled in left, his fade catching an unfortunate ricochet off the branches. He finds himself Obi as well. We'll see Rasmus now in a similar space spot rather than uh, to Yuna. Swings it in. Oh! Off the top of the basket. No way. Oh, and he gets the OP long. That How is punishing. How unfortunate for such a drive. Man, such an, that such cool. an upshot. That was, that was just so close to an eagle. Great attempt by Rasmus Lucas with a little skipper up there as well. Oh, yeah. Looks that looks to be just about five meters out. Temu now to try and save the par. Wow, gives it a great bid. 
Let's see. I think Rasmus also checking his placement. For par. No. Again, just a little off the mark for his putt. He's going to need to get that cleaned up on the back for the back nine because he needs to get something going here. And he's been catching a lot of metal. Lucas as well there. Catching metal and taking his five after an OB. Rasmus has just not been able to put them in. He's been all over the basket. We see Yuna now for birdie. And a fantastic birdie putt there to right the ship. His score round is back to even after a triple bogey on hole one. And we have not even completed the first half of the course. And I will just mention, that's going to be a two-stroke swing. It will be a one-stroke game now. That nice, huge cushion that Temu had is is all but gone. It's back to, to square one again. So he taps in his bogey, his first of round two. As you mentioned, he's back to even, and things are close as ever. I mean... An exciting battle. What a comeback from Yuna to recover after that unfortunate hole one we see. Beautiful hole nine. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. The one that does not fit with the rest. Hole nine, par three, 76 meters, slightly downhill, got a humongous tunnel to hit. I mean, Acer on potential here, but it does kind of throw you off, like you were saying. It, it's a. Uh, it's, it just doesn't fit the rest of the course, but you can take it for granted. A great Yuna straight shot not. there. <laughs> and it's funny when a hole is so seemingly easy that you feel like you have to get it every time, but there's no room to not birdie it. It puts a lot of, you put a lot of pressure on yourself as a player, especially competing at the top level. And that is true. I mean, that will be a six meter putt for Lucas. You know, you expect to get that thing parked, but shouldn't be a big deal for for uh, this lead card here. Oh, but that is early out of the hand for Rasmus. And the standstill sure. choice there maybe not working too well for him. We see Temo opt for the same. Oh, Anheuser yeah. out of the hand. I think a stable disc. This looks to be flattening out beautifully. And Perfect. Perfect bullseye. Very nicely done. Standstill's a hard shot to uh, to master. It's uh, it's good to see that. That's good control with the body there. Rasmus not finding the two on what might be considered a must-get hole, averaging 2.4 on this par 3. I think this is all of a musket that you can have on this course. Lucas. What a putt from Lucas. Shows off his flexibility, the elasticity of the pants, and a great putt. <laughs> Did you see the little look back, too? He gave he a knew. little, like, smirk, like, mm-hmm. Showing off my, my athleticism <laughs> with my stretchy <laughs> pants. And Yuna with the umbrella putt. Not bad. Three for four on this. That's that's solid. And I think especially in wet conditions, the early release or the slip out early in the swing is the most likely mistake. It's not surprising to see at least one out of four get a slight misrelease in these very tricky wet conditions. As we take a look at the leaderboard for our lead card here, we have Temu at an eight under, Yuna right behind him at seven under. Rasmus falling unfortunately just to two under with some bogeys in his front nine and Lucas with a strong performance sitting at five under. Well, let's take a look and see how the rest of the field has done. Oh, we got some movement here. Jonas Alto with a four down on the front nine, tied for second place. Mikhail Ham also coming back three down. Check out Hutiainen at six under in the front nine. Wow, that's Powerful. Deep. No doubt in these conditions, these guys will continue to battle well into the back nine. Catch us there. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe.